Hey everybody, today we're gonna unbox, set up, and test a brand new printer and brand new sublimation ink. So stick around. Hey everybody and welcome. If you've never been to this channel before, my name is Roy and we talk mostly about sublimation, but hey, I'm open to anything. Today we're gonna do an unboxing, an installation, and a testing of two products. One is a brand new Epson printer that we're gonna to convert to sublimation, which basically means putting sublimation ink in. But the second thing, and what I'm most excited about, is the ink. We're gonna try a brand new sublimation ink that I have heard great, great reviews on. So, the first thing I think we need to do is, uh, is get our printer and our ink. All right, here we go. Our printer is the ET2800. It's an eco tank by Epson. And the ink that I'm very excited to try out is Cyclone ink. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute before we install it. So the printer that I currently have and I've been using for several years is the Epson Workforce 7710. It's an old cartridge based printer and it's been discontinued for probably two years. Every few weeks to a month, depending on how much I'm printing, I have to pull the cartridges out, use a syringe to put the sublimation ink in and then continue along. This particular printer, though, has really been fantastic to me. It prints up to 13 by 19. It's easy to work on, and I got to tell you, it's been a workhorse. I love it. So here's what started this whole ball rolling on getting a new printer. I want to get the F570 Epson sublimation printer. Uh, it's $2,500. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, that one has just been discontinued, and there's a newer model. It's the F570 Pro or something like that for $300 more, I think like $2,800. Anyway, that's what I want. Um, I can't justify spending the money now. And my Workforce 7710 started acting up. Several months ago, I needed to do some prints that required 13 by 19 inch sublimation paper. So I shifted everything. Um, I had done this before with no issues. And then when I switched back to 8.5 by 11, which is what I use 90 nine percent of the time maybe 95 percent of the time uh, it was I, I i changed my printer settings back i changed the computer settings back and it was printing slightly larger at 100 percent. it was printing at like 101 and a half and i lowered it to 99 percent, and it was still printing just a hair large my workaround was i would print at 99 percent, and then trim a little bit. Even 99% was a little bit too large. 98% was, of course, uh, too small. So I, I for, for quite some time, did a whole lot of tumblers where I had to, to visually cut down a little bit more than, than uh, I normally am used to. And so I thought, you know what? I am going to get me a printer that is just dedicated to 8.5 by 11 uh, until I can get the, um, the F570 because I need to be able to print these things out. What I'll do is I'll take my 7710 and move it to 13 by 19 and just use that to print 13 by 19 images. But in doing research, I have used Cosmos ink in that 7710 forever and absolutely love it. You'll never hear me say anything bad about Cosmos ink. But I was hearing all kind of noise on this new ink called Cyclone ink. So. I decided to test that. And I'm excited because all of the photos that I have seen, the ink is it's stunning. The, the, it's bright, it's crisp. So we're definitely gonna put it in this printer and see what it's like. But here is the, we'll start with the Cyclone ink. I don't want this to be an unboxing because we know how to open up a package. That's for another video. Here is our ink. I'm kind of excited about this. I, again, I love Cosmos ink, but the uh, what I was seeing on some of these Facebook groups about this stuff is uh, shy of amazing. So, let's see if we can get this open. Okay, here's our packing. This ink is made in the United States, so that's something that I think is really, really cool. In today's day and age, you, you don't get a whole lot of that. Okay, number one, gently shake ink bottle, remove outer cap, snug inner cap if needed, meaning if it's loosened a little bit, you wanna make sure that's tight, and then fill the printer. So, 
I'm really excited. This, this ink, this ink has just been blowing me away as far as uh, what it looks like. So let's get with the, uh, the four colors. Let's go with the printer now. We'll get back to the ink in just a moment. Okay, so I opted to go with this one, as I said before, because I ultimately want to get the, the sublimation printer, the Epson sublimation printer. They have two, uh, F170, which only prints eight and a half by 11, and an F570, which is the sublimation printer that, uh, uh, that will print, I think, 24 inches wide and as long as you want. So it's a beast of a printer. Now, there are those that would argue that the Epson ET1500 is, uh, 15,000, 1500, 15,000, anyway, is uh, pretty much the same thing and a lot less. It's just not a sub printer and you don't get the warranty. Um, that's not the subject of this video. And I haven't done enough research to really uh, know exactly what to do with all that. But so here's what we're gonna do. Let's let me get this printer out, and then we will um, we'll take a look at it. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to put the Cyclone ink into the printer. Now these tops are on pretty tight, so you want to give them a good little turn, and then you just want to make sure that the 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 inner top is a little bit snug on there. And then we're gonna raise this, we're gonna open this up, and then we're gonna go with our first color here is yellow. Make sure you put it in the right one. And I'm gonna flip this over, and from what I have read with the Cyclone ink, you wanna push it down and hold it down, but it will stop whenever it gets full. So it is slowly coming in. I'm gonna look down here, see how that's slowly starting to fill up right here. So I can hear it chugging along like me at happy hour on a Friday afternoon. And I'm nervous because it says it's gonna stop. Look at that, it did stop. All right, so I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna pull that out. I wanna close that yellow up. I'm gonna put the yellow away. And then I'll do magenta next, and that one's done. Okay, there we go. Get off these tops were not actually difficult to undo, but sometimes I, I, here they are. And then you always want to make sure that this inner top is on. I think that's it for the blue. Took a second longer to get that blue in there, but it went in. And then we're gonna do a final the black. And we'll put that in, and it looks like that one is done. So we have installed the inks. Now we're going to plug in the power cable. Here is our power cord, and it looks to be the exact same, symmetrical. So we just plug that in, and then make sure you plug it into an outlet, if you use an extension cord, make sure it's an approved extension cord because we want to be safe with electricity. Okay, so Epson did include a CD-ROM, which does no good for me because I have a Mac without a CD-ROM drive. So I went to Google and typed in Epson 2800 Mac software, and it brought me to this page. And if I go down to, I can go to downloads and I clicked the download and it downloaded this uh, DMG file. So I'll double click it and it will open up the Epson installer. I'll double click that license agreement, accept it. Next, um, connect wireless network. So here's the deal. I prefer wireless printing because Oftentimes I am in another room and I want to print things out. However, I will tell you that if you ever go and print something and you get half of a print and it stops, that's probably the, the reason. And it's my understanding that this particular Epson printer has a very small, a very small Wi-Fi chip. So 
Um, we are going to try connecting wireless though for now. Let's try turning it on. Epson. English. Yes. No, I do not want to use the Smart Panel app. That is a, um, a, a, an app on a phone, I think. So I'm going to do that. Okay, preparing. Probably need to pull this stuff out. You know what? Let me put some ink, uh, let me put some paper in there. Initializing, do not turn the power off until an initialization is complete. This takes about 11 minutes. One thing to note, the ink is going down during this uh, initialization process, which is normal. I hope. Okay, we are back. It says installation complete. Okay. Uh, align the printer head to get the best print uh, quality. I'm going to proceed. Now, I am using regular paper in there because I don't want to perform a print head nozzle check. We'll do that. Load paper. And we will hit print. Now, it did use a, a nice little bit during the um, initial, initialization process. Okay, so let's look at this. It actually, let's look at this. It actually looks really, uh, really good on there. So I'm going to say, are there any missing segments? I'm going to go down to no and okay, proceed. Align print position to fix misalignment and banding. So we'll do that. We'll hit OK to proceed. When I got the 7710 and the Cosmos ink, back then they were saying, um, if you've got a brand new printer, load it up with the original Epson ink and then flush it out, which is what I did and it worked fine. But nowadays, and in this case very specifically, you do not use the original Epson ink that came with it if you want to use sublimation and it's a new printer. So if you'll notice, here's my regular ink that um, has, is not out of the box and it's not going to be out of the box, out of the bag. Okay, so now this is doing an alignment, I think is what it said. The good news is this $199 uh, printer. Um, but you know what? $199 is $199. Now, if this thing ends up working well, uh, you know, for people that are wanting to do mostly or all eight and a half by 11 or like 20 ounce uh, tumblers and 11 and 16 ounce coffee mugs, this might be the way to go. Okay, so this is what this is showing. And I believe, look at the printout and choose boxes with the least lines. So basically as you're aligning it, you'll get this. And what this basically is an opportunity for you to uh, align the print heads up. And the first option will be, it'll say number one, and it'll say which one of these are the most aligned, which one that looks the most solid. And so you'll pick say three and then hit next and it'll go on number on line number two, which one is the best, and it goes all the way through. Once you finish that, it will print this out, and you wanna pick the one that is uh, the closest. This one threw me off because they all look very, very similar, but uh, you wanna pick the one that is uh, uh, the closest to not having an overlap, I think. I don't know. Pick the prettiest one. Anyway, follow the directions, that's my advice. Now let's print a couple out to see how they look. I did want to remind everyone, all of the designs in this video are mine. They can be purchased at industrialfringedesigns.com. There will be a link in the description. This is one of the prints that we're going to test with. So I'm going to go, I use Preview on Mac to do my printing. So I'm going to go to Print, ATA 2800. I'm going to use eight and a half by 11 and under media and quality, I'm selecting the plain paper setting and making sure the quality is set to best. And then make sure I set the scale to 100%. Okay, it's starting to print. 
Hopefully I put the paper in correctly. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I printed, I still had the plain paper and I forgot to put sublimation paper in. So this is the second try. Okay, well, it's, it's looking beautiful. The, the, um, the color is just, and this is, remember, subpaper, so it's going to be more dull on this. All right. I am going to print one more. 2800, 8.5 by 11. I did the last setting, so I should have plain paper best quality. And I go back to preview and make sure I scale it to 100%. And we print it out. Okay, there is our second print from the 2800. Okay, so let's print the same designs from our Workforce 7710 and Cosmos Inc and see what happens. We'll compare them. Okay, everybody, here are the final results. One of these is from the Workforce 7710 with Cosmos Inc. The other one is from the Epson ET2800 with Cyclone Inc. Can you tell? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, there is a noticeable difference in saturation and color quality. And that is with the 2800 and the Cyclone Inc. Now, I'm gonna tell you, both of them are fantastic. And quite honestly, the coloring of the beard on the Cosmos Inc. is a little bit more accurate to the design um, as opposed to the one with Cyclone, but the one with Cyclone still looks a lot better. Uh, I will tell you that I've had instances with Cosmos Inc., and I believe this is pretty much the case with any ink. Your, your picture, your screen is not going to give you accurate colors. And so sometimes, I know in the past when I was doing a design that needed a very specific tone, a very specific color, I would have to go in and play around and adjust that. So I don't think this is any different than any other ink. I did make this one with a matte tumbler, and I don't know if you can see these well. I'll take a picture and put them on the screen. One of these, again, is the Cosmos ink, and one of them is the um, Cyclone. And there is a noticeable difference. And the one with the brighter colors is the Cyclone ink. I'm really quite impressed with this. Um, they've kind of hit it out of the park. Let me show you real quick a couple of prints that we haven't subbed yet. We'll sub them and we'll see what they look like. All right, pumpkin spice time. This was printed with the 7710 and this was printed with the 2800 Cosmos Inc, Cyclone Inc. So we're going to press these and see what they look like. And then one more. This is showing some of the blacks. This is the Cosmos Inc with the 7710. And then this is the 2800 with the Cyclone Inc. And as you can tell on these, I hope the camera picks it up. The 7710 does look like it has darker blacks. But don't let that fool you because I believe when we print it out, we're going to see uh, pretty much the same thing. So let's, let's uh, put these on tumblers, print them out, and see what they look like. back and uh, I got to tell you it's really quite impressive and there is a pretty big difference uh, if you can see right here this one is the Cyclone ink and this one is Cosmos ink and the Cyclone ink is obviously a lot brighter and here's our um, this would look good, I think, on a glow-in-the-dark tumbler. Here's our Freddy with Cyclone and Freddy with Cosmos. 
and they both look great. You know, I, I've always been a fan of, of Cosmo, so I, I will never talk bad about them. I will tell you though, this Cyclone ink is really impressive. It's very vibrant, very saturated. Now, in the past, sometimes I would up the saturation a little bit before I printed something out. I won't do that with the um, Cyclone ink. And I will continue to use it in my 2800. And who knows, when I run out of ink in the 7710, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I, I got to tell you, I just absolutely love, love, love the, um, the Cyclone ink. So to wrap it up, summary, the Epson ET2800 for $199 is a phenomenal print. Let me rephrase that. It's a phenomenal printer if you can live within the confines of eight and a half by, I think 14 is what the, the, uh, the length is, uh, but eight and a half wide. If you can live within those constraints, it's amazing. I mean, you figure if you get 200 prints and it dies, you paid a buck a print. So it's not too bad. The Cyclone ink is unbelievably vibrant. I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, so much so that I might even do another video just on the, the Cyclone ink. It's, it's fantastic. I will leave a link in the description for the Cyclone ink. Um, feel free to go there and tell them Roy sent you. Uh, it's just uh, amazing. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget, hit that uh, notification bell, hit the like button, and make sure you subscribe for uh, hopefully some uh, great videos coming up soon. Also, we do have a Facebook group, so feel free to go over and join that. I do ask that you answer the questions and agree to the group rules. It's a great, great, great group of people. As a matter of fact, Michael Carter is the one that turned me on to this Inc. So shout out to you, Michael. Thank you so much for uh, uh, for doing that. Um, Facebook group, though, it is phenomenal. So a description, uh, a link will be in the description, so you can check that out. Again, like, notifications, subscribe, all that great stuff. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Follow me, boys. Follow me. What are we going to do? Okay, we're recording now. What have we got to do? La -de -da, la -da -de, la -de -da. <coughs> I need to plug it in. <sighs> okay. <coughs> now let's try to print some prints and see what happens. Print some prints and prints. Print some prints. Now we're going to print a couple. It's an app on a phone. What the hell am I saying? <clears throat> if you haven't been to this channel before, my name is.